Welcome back to our tech. Today we're going to review the Western Digital SSD. Most importantly, swap it with a Windows bootable drive that is existing and see if this boots faster. So SSDs have been in the market for quite some time now and this is no different. This is a very simple SSD. It's the Western Digital Green SATA SSD. It's not the NVMe disk. It's uh, the M.2 disk and it's a much smaller form factor than your boxy SSDs. So this will plug into a M.2 port on your motherboard. Most new motherboards have at least two M.2.0 ports. I like this one, this is the WD Green and you also get the blue variant which is slightly more uh, expensive and I think it's got a little more to do with performance as well. So let's quickly open this box up and the packaging has a nice transparent window where you can actually see the drive inside. Okay, inside I can see that it's also got another plastic box and a big user manual a lot of paperwork we'll just put that in the side for now and you can see the drive is packed in another plastic shell case so there it is that's the drive we're going to review today it sort of looks like a ram chip right so this one's uh, the 240 gb variant 3.3 volts 1.5 amps that's about 5 watts of power consumption uh, by the way, the pin structure is very different for the NVMe drives. Those are much faster than this one and of course more expensive. So this one's a little uh, cheaper. It's for those people who don't want that ultra fast boot times. I'm just looking to replace the hybrid drive that I have with this one. At the back of the drive, you see there's nothing on that. No chips. It's just empty PCB. So to mount this, I have two M.2.0 ports on my motherboard and one is right above the graphics card and there's one right below or beneath the graphics card. To mount this, you need a special screw which comes with your motherboard. So I kind of pulled out everything that I got with the motherboard and figured that, you know, um, even the smallest screw that I had wasn't going to fit in those M.2.0 slots. So what you really need is the you know the m.2.0 screw which you get with your motherboard most motherboards give you one of these and it is always kept in a plastic uh, sachet like this one so that you don't lose it it's really really tiny and without this you're basically screwed so if you have a nice magnetic screwdriver it'll help you fasten this once you put in the drive i'm sorry about the angle that i'm showing you here so the, i have a very limited spacing option here as you can see there's a wireless card in my desktop which takes out a lot of space i'm going to try and put it anyways so while this is being installed i also want to let you know that some motherboards like the one i have here the steel legend from asrock will use the same data paths for your hard disk the sata hard disk port as well as your m.2.0 ports so basically one of them will get disabled and this motherboard does that unfortunately and because of that or whatever reason uh, the drive did not work for me when I installed it in the first port so I had to take it off and I realized it's good it's probably because of the data sharing that's happening so one of the SATA ports is actually using the same pathway Anyways, I didn't want to waste time and I know there's another port at the bottom there. So I just wanted to put it off there. So as you can see, I've already removed the graphics card and that's already a lot of work for me. So once you do that, it's it's practically very easy to put in the drive. Remember, when you actually slot this in, it stays at an angle and you'll have to use a screw to uh, position this in place and fasten it to the motherboard. So that's not going to stay till you add the screw in place. So once you do that, you all you have to do is just go to BIOS once you open up your drives. So going to the storage configuration, I could see that the drive was detected. From here on, it's a matter of just a few other steps. 
All you have to do is now boot to Windows 10, whatever OS you have. You should see, once you run disk management, you should see that there's an un unallocated uh, space, which is basically a new drive. Just format it with the regular settings and you're good to go. So 223.5 GB approximately is what you get. Just make it into a simple volume and that's it. Now you can do a fresh install, but all the software and all those games you have installed have to be reinstalled. And that's not a ideal thing for someone who's got a lot of things installed. So I decided that rather than doing a fresh install, I'm going to do a clone. And for that, all you need is a cloning software, which is free from Western Digital. So I just Googled it. And I also found some alternatives like the Macrium Reflect. So you'll see that there are a lot of cloning softwares and Western Digital themselves have the Acronis, which uh, is a good cloning tool. But you know, it's got some limitations because of which I downloaded another software called the Macrium Reflect. Again, it's free and does a great job. So we'll, we'll look at positives of both of them. This one's really cool. I mean, Macrium has done a great job. I, I just have to recommend this software because there's no pain. Even the free version does a lot for you. So of course, before you do this, it's always better to back up your data. Make a copy of Windows anyways, using a pen drive. So let me show you the interface of the Acronis. So this is basically uh, Western Digital's cloning software. It does let you take backup and do a few other things here. Now, one of the things which I couldn't find easily, or maybe it's missing here, is to clone a bigger drive into a smaller drive. And when I say a bigger drive, a 500 GB disk to say a 250 or 240 GB disk. The only problem here is, let's say I just want to clone one part of the disk and not the entire 500 GB. I couldn't find the option for that. So basically select the automatic mode, there's a manual mode too, if you want to play around with that. So you go to clone disk, select your source disk. And I'm just looking at the options I have here. So you can see that all my drives are bigger than the SSD. So it wasn't really user friendly. So then I selected manual mode. Again, I couldn't see the breakup. It just tells me to clone the entire drive. What about the partitions? So I couldn't see that option. So if you want to still go ahead with the cloning, you can go ahead or else you can actually cancel it. On the other hand, the Macrium Reflect. Now this is a dream come true software. I mean, honestly, uh, creating a clone disk and putting it, making it bootable is, is really fascinating. And this software lets you do it so easily. And it's the, the user interface much more appealing you feel like you know you can see what you're doing clearly it's really nice so i'm sure that acronis also lets you clone a portion of the drive but you know in this software everything is so much clearer it, it lets you do that much easier so here you can see that i'm only selecting one portion of the drive i'm just using one of the partitions which i'm going to clone so c drive has windows and i'm only going to clone that part So just for the demo, I'm, I'm cloning this partition onto an empty space. I've already used the SSD and it's already a bootable drive. So I'm just going to clone it to say a 150 GB from a 240 GB. Yeah, so the options here you get is select a disk to clone to. And once you select that, uh, let me open the Seagate gaming folder. Right now, you notice the size over here. So this is a 250 GB disk and I'm selecting a much smaller disk. So the destination drive is much smaller. So what happens if you click next? I'm just making sure that I don't delete anything by mistake. So I'm just going a little slow here. But yeah, when you click next, okay, you have an option to schedule the clone and then you have the advanced options. So here you have the option to only copy the use space and not the entire disk. 
And once you click next, next, you just click finish. That's it. So now there's another step. Now you have two bootable drives. So you have one Windows disk, which is already booting up. And you've just created another clone disk, which is going to confuse Windows, right? So you need to go back to the BIOS. And once you're in BIOS, you need to go to boot options and ensure that this is only one drive which you want to use for booting. Disable all other booting drives. Right, so I'm just going to keep the SSD as the boot option. The remaining drives are not going to be bootable and I don't want the data. So you can remove those partitions later, but make sure that you select the right boot disk. So I'm going to power up the computer. Now, initially before, you know, having the SSD installed, I booted it with my old hard disk. It's a hybrid drive. It's got about 8 GB of SSD already. It's still not as fast as the uh, full fledged SSD, but the boot time was about one and a half minute and it's a hybrid drive. I'm sure the older hard disk would have taken much longer than two minutes, but a hybrid drive takes about one and a half minutes to boot up. It's still less than two minutes. So once I put the SSD in, you know, I ran the test for the first time and it was impressive. The computer booted in about a minute or so. It still wasn't really fast, but I realized that when I, you know, ran the test again, the second time, you know, the time was reducing to about 55 seconds. So I guess it takes some time for the, you know, software to kind of rearrange itself on the SSD. So you might get much faster times, maybe 45, 50 seconds. So with NVMe, you will get it, you know, much lower than that. But for now, you know, 55 seconds was my benchmark with the WT Green for Windows 10. And that's for a clone disk. So maybe the fresh install will be much faster. Let me know in the comments below. So that's how you clone an SSD, put a bootable partition on it, and you can see that the PC responds much faster. Everything works much smoother than your regular hard disk. I hope the video was useful. In case you like the video, please hit the like button and do consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching our tech and I'll see you on the next one.